So today we are going to check autonomous database and we are going to run a benchmark on it. Uh, we are going to use a tool called Swing Bench and you can find the details here. And there is uh, there are steps for installation, command line parameters, and a couple of scenarios that you can check. And to run this benchmark, you will need a compute instance and an Oracle database uh, autonomous instance. So um, what I have here is actually I created the instances earlier prior to starting this video and I have them ready here, but I want to show you something in my autonomous DB. Um, once you create it, or actually while you, you are creating your autonomous DB instance, uh, please make sure you just deselect the auto scaling option here because it is uh, scaling the DB up automatically and we don't want that for this instance. Uh, we are going to do it manually just to observe how up, uh, scaling up the DB is you know, changing the performance. So in this case, we will manually scale up the database and we will observe the transactions running. So um, uh, what you will need to connect to this database is the DB wallet. So you can download the DB wallet here from the DB connection. And if you just uh, click download wallet here, you will be able to download the wallet after you throw a password here. So I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna download it once more. And pretty much that's it. Just a compute instance to configure the swing bench and an autonomous DB instance, which is just one OCPU to uh, replicate the benchmark. Uh, in my compute instance, I'm using an Oracle Linux image. So let's connect to this uh, virtual machine right now. And let's start configuring the um, swing bench. So I will just grab my public IP from here. Okay. And I will create a new SSH session. Uh, username is always OPC unless you are using an Ubuntu image. Um, private key, I need to select here. Okay. So I'm already in my VM, so here, that's my public IP again. Here is the DB uh, wallet file that I have already uploaded earlier. So it's just my wallet file and then there's nothing else here. Uh, once you start your instance, just make sure you have uh, Java, Java installed. So I have the version 1.8. And other than that, the next step is just to configure the uh, actual download and configure the swing mode. So I will just use wget and the link which downloads the latest version of the swing match. So it's already downloaded. So I will unzip it here. Okay, we have it here. So once again, I want to mention that you will need the DB vault file here. So just make sure you upload it to the directory that you will that we will use in a second. So while I mean. Uh, since we have the Swing Bench tool here downloaded, let's go and check the bin folder, what we have inside. So here we have the order entry wizard and the char bench utility that we are going to use. So these two are today's, let's say, uh, use cases. So order entry wizard is actually creating an order entry schema and populating some data inside and uh, creating indexes and tables and some sample data. And afterwards, after using uh, order entry wizard, we will use uh, Charbench to, let's say, generate some workload on the database. And we will be able to scale up the database from the console and observe the changes in the transactions. So this will be the summary. So in order to run order entry wizard, uh, I have already a script here that I prepared earlier. So I will copy and paste this and we will go through it. So order entry wizard uh, is actually like, it, this will start the order entry wizard, the uh, code here. And then 
Uh, this is the location of my wallet file, DB wallet file. So here it's in my home directory and I'm pointing here my home directory. And then this is the connection type that I'm using for the autonomous database connection, user type, connection type actually. So the next one is the data. It's the default table space for Oracle autonomous database. The next one is my DB password. So my DB user, and then again, I'm using the admin user for creating this uh, order entry schema and then the tables and indexes inside. So um, the same password that I'm using for the DB here for the sake of uh, easiness. And then the next one is the scale. So scale is actually by default one gigabyte, but uh, I, I just set it to 0 0.1 for the script to run fast and um, you know and quickly. So this will create a this just will just create 100 megabytes of data, and then that's it. So once we run once I run the script, you will be seeing the um, log and a percentage. It will show us at what stage we are. And even though the percentage will be here. It, the script will continue running after the percentage is completed. So um, here it is. I will I will just pause the video here, and we will go on right after the script is over. So see you in a minute. So the script is over right now. Uh, it's successfully ran, and the data data generation is completed right now. So we will see the um, tables and indexes created here and um, on top here there's some interesting stats um, rows generated and commits completed and so on so this will be the basic summary of this um, data generation let's say so the next step is to generate some actual load on the database and then after that while the script is running uh, we are going to go back to the console and scale up the DB, and we will observe the transactions. We will observe the change in the transactions uh, happening at that moment. So um, the next thing is let's run the Charbench utility. So I have a script for that as well here already prepared. Um, so. Here is the uh, Charbench script that we are gonna use. This is the configuration file that you can also manipulate or change, but uh, I just kept it as it is, so I didn't make any changes on this one. And you can create your own if you feel like doing so. And uh, here is the DB uh, wallet file again in the same location that I'm pointing to, to the home directory. And again, the same uh, user connection. And here the same uh, admin user and password. So additionally, I'm going to observe here the users transaction per minute and transaction per second to actually uh, see what will be the NIV, let's say, numbers after scaling them up or down. So this will be the use case. And here, this is the number of connections or the concurrent users, let's say. So I just set it to 100 and 128. So this will be it. When I run the script, uh, it will be first, uh, we will see the uh, users connecting to the uh, database, and then we will see the transactions starting to flow. As you see, we have connections here, like all of them are connected now, and then the transactions per second on the second. Uh, Rob is being generated right now. So uh, let's observe what is the average number here. So it's more or less around, I would say uh, 400 so. And we, we are going to observe, let's say what's going to happen after we scale it up, we scale the DB up. So, um, here we are, again, in our uh, OCI console. Right now, I'm going to go to 
my database instance and I will manually scale up the DB. Again, all CPU count was one and it's an ATP instance as you see. So I will go here, scale up, and I will manually scale up the OCPU count to two, let's say, and then I will click update. Um, here, the database state will go into scaling in progress, and this will take maybe a minute or so, or maybe less. And meanwhile, we can observe the metrics here. As you see here, there's a peak CPU utilization. But other than that, not much going on. So not a really busy workload. So scaling is still in progress. And we see the numbers here are actually uh, more than the double right now. It was around like 400 or so. Now we have numbers around like 1,500, 400. And this is actually the effect of scaling up the DB. So this is the transactions per running, transactions running per second, and the increase here, as you see. So if you scale it back to one of CPU, the transactions running per second will also again fall back to 400 or 500, let's say, on that level. So um, basically, this was this was a whole um, stress test. And hope this was also um, interesting for you. And hope to hoping to see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.